Thank you, Kerr here. Look, I will firstly, uh, I, I just want to use this opportunity really to say a few thanks and to acknowledge. Firstly, to congratulate you, Mark Dalius, Kerr here, look, of the Shannon. I first met you, I think, at your very first campaign in Dunleary as was a council there since the early 90s, my, in the mid-90s, myself, 99, actually, and onward. And certainly I met you at every campaign, and I was always taken by your energy, your enthusiasm, and your belief in something bigger and something greater for the island of Ireland. And yes, people questioned that, and yes, people suggested there was other alternatives, other motives. I never thought that. I thought you were very driven, very focused, and very determined. And I know that you helped many of the Fianna Fáil people here elected in this last election. You gave them your assistance and you gave them your support. And you're a man that plays for the long game. And today, you've reaped your reward. And today, you're the victor. Today, you're the Cahirlock. May you enjoy it, because it's an important privilege for a few. And I wish you well. I want to congratulate the leader. I've always been a great admirer of hers, and I've never made any secret of the fact from the day I came in to the Shannon, and any engagement I had with Minister Regina Doherty, I had a response. I had people who took up the call, who followed through, and people suggested it was, she was a tough taskmaster, and I said, fair play to her. That's what I want. That's the person who should be running our department. That's the person who should be a government minister. And I suggested you recall, some of my friends here will recall that I suggested it be a great place for the Senate. I'm thrilled, I'm delighted. You have proven yourself. And at a time when most people were hanging up and being dejected and angry and vexatious, you stuck with it. You stayed with it. You served the nation. And I think people were in awe of you. And some people didn't quite know who really you were in terms of your ministry, Fine Gael. But I want to acknowledge this about the government, the outgoing government. They were exceptional in relation to the COVID pandemic. They stood up and they led and they explained. And what a nice opportunity it must have been for them in the last few days to see it all come back, to see Ireland reopen, to see our shops open. And when something's good and has been successful, it is important we as politicians acknowledge that. So I want to acknowledge that and I look forward to working with Regina Doherty, the leader of the House. I want to thank Jerry Buttermer for his leadership in the outgoing Senate and for Dennis uh, Donovan, who the Coherlock. I particularly want to thank the captain, the superintendent, the staff, the family of Leinster House, the people that make all this happen, because that's really, really important. I want to thank the clerk and all his staff and everyone in Leinster House who makes our work so much easier. I think that's really important and it's something we should acknowledge. I particularly want to thank the COVID pandemic frontline workers, the people that we all talk about. It's too easy to stand outside a hospital door and make a clap and clap people. That's important too. But there will be FEMPI obligations coming up in relation to their pay. And I hope all of us will push to acknowledge and to reward the frontline workers of this country. Because there is something now more than ever we've become conscious of in the last few months. It is that we have a good state. We can be proud of state services, and yes, they've got to improve, but they're really important for us. On behalf of the independents that are in the, our group, and I just want to say we will work constructively, positively with everyone. But we will also call out bad government when it needs to be called out. We will work with everyone. We will tease out every line of every piece of legislation that comes into this House because we have a revising role in this House. And I think we need to remind ourselves of that. In relation to politics, political parties, it was never, ever envisaged by the forefathers of the state and the Shandadarian and how it was established. And there's nowhere where it says it in the Irish Constitution where we break out into political groupings. This is something that's come about as a, as a result of practice. It is not provided for constitutionally that we would break out into political parties. And maybe there's something we need to look at. In relation to Shannon reform, Shannon reform starts here and it starts here today. How we conduct ourselves, how we are respectful for our mutual positions, how we deal with one another, 
how we do not in use language that is an inciter to hatred or discrimination, how we conduct ourselves as parliamentarians in the houses of the Oireachtas. That's reform. And let's go forward here with a commitment that we will respect one another in our work, wherever we come from. I want to wrap up really by saying that we, each one of us, all of us 60 in this house, are here legitimately. We have been elected or selected by Antishok, which is his constitutional prerogative. And that's really important to say. We are all the same in this house. And that's really, really important that we get that message over. Of course I am disappointed in relation to Northern Ireland, because we were led to believe that a unionist would be appointed. I travel to Northern Ireland on a very, very regular basis. I have family and friends who would describe themselves as moderate unionists. Many of them have contacted me in the last few days saying how disappointed and how hurt they were. And I appreciate that Taoiseach has a difficult decision to make. And this is a particularly difficult government in terms of putting out ministries and 11 nominees. But I do think it's important. I think, I think it's disappointing. I, along with a number of my colleagues, met with Ian Marshall in Leinster House, because that's the measure of the man. And he was there today, and we met, and we exchanged, and we, he was positive. But I could not feel, as I left, how disappointed that somewhere in this process, we left out somebody that was articulate, capable, that made a case in Northern Ireland in relation to Brexit, was against Brexit in Britain, in the UK, who made an outstanding contribution in relation to agriculture and innovation. And somehow, with only two years, who was encouraged and asked by the Taoiseach to run. I took the time to Google on Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar and Ian Marshall today. I could have printed off 35 pages of glowing reports by both him and Simon Coveney in relation to Ian Marshall and yet he wasn't there. And then in relation to the diaspora, why was it this wonderful diaspora that we need to look into this country again, to reinvest, to bring money in here, and to share our experiences? So I think that's an important thing, and we missed out another opportunity there. And finally, I want to say, we bring our own unique experiences, our backgrounds, our traditions to this job. We should never leave them outside. We are who we are. It is about being authentic to ourselves and being allowed and being given the space to be authentic in public life. I wish each and every one of you well. I particularly wish this new government well. It is a difficult, it is a difficult task and there will be many challenges. But I think, yes, they need time to settle into their ministries. Yes, they will need time to look at this program for government and see how best they will bring it about. Yes, they will need time for this fiscal or job stimulus that's about to come. And finally, I want to say one other thing. I want to congratulate Minister, Senator, most unusual, Pippa Hackett. And I think for a number of reasons I'm particularly proud. One, it's in the area of agriculture, an area the, 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 where I got elected myself. And one might ask, what's a fellow in Dunleary looking out of the sea, topping the pole in the the agricultural panel. And I'll tell you why. Because it's about people. It's about empathy. It's about traveling around this country and networking and supporting regional government and local government and the practitioners of local government, be they city and county councillors. I was born in Kildare and through circumstances came to Dunleary. I like to think I'm both rural and I'm urban. I'm national and I'm international in terms of my outlook and I look at international parliaments way beyond us to see and learn. So I think that's what I put that down to. But in relation to Senator, Minister, Senator Pippa Hackett, I think it demonstrates the capacity and the capability and the pathway from this house to the Dáil and from the Dáil back. And I have no doubt there'll be a midterm review in, in terms of ministries and portfolios and I hope other opportunities will come for other senators in this house to go and bring their expertise and their experience to government. So I wish all of us well. I particularly wish you, Cahillach, Mark Daly, every success for your term in office.